Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel Deauville. All right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start workouts, let's go to work, this is laundry, whatever it is that you're doing, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from I Love Skies. What are your thoughts on the quality decline with Chanel bags over the years? I have a couple of vintage bags and also new ones, and I'm sorry to say that the quality just isn't there. I'm also on the purse forum a lot, and I hear stories all the time that people are having problems with new Chanel. Your insight would be appreciated. Fantastic question, and um, I personally haven't had any issues with quality when it comes to the handbags within my collection. I haven't had any issues with wear and tear. I haven't had any issues with pop stitching or anything like that. I also don't have a vintage Chanel to be able to compare it to, but I have also heard the same thing. A lot of people say that it's just not there. It's not what it used to be. You know, so as I said before, I personally haven't had any issues. I haven't had to take any of my items, whether it's a, um, a handbag or a small leather good in for a repair. The only problem that I've had, the only issue that I've had has been with their costume jewelry. Now, even though I don't have a vintage Chanel to be able to compare it to, I completely understand what you're talking about because lately I have seen quite a few items that are at the boutiques that shouldn't have passed quality control, like at all. You know, a couple of months ago when I was in Las Vegas, I was in one of the boutiques and I was looking at some of their small leather goods and I saw that the hardware was kind of off center or the stitching was completely uneven and it just looked like it was, it just didn't have that same quality that I was used to, you know? And I remember asking the associate about it. I was said, hey, you know, it's kind of, kind of seems like it's off center, right? Um, and they just kept pushing on the small leather good to kind of make it look like it was centered. And they said, no, 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 it's good. You know, and I'm just <laughs> sitting there thinking, no way, it, do it doesn't look the way that it should, especially for the price, you know, that these items are, whether it's a handbag, a small leather good, or anything that the fashion house sells, you know, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a stick of bubble gum that you're trying to buy or anything like that. So I completely understand what you're talking about. There are so many things that I've seen lately, as I said previously, that shouldn't, um, that shouldn't have been put out on the sales floor whatsoever. And Chanel, uh, just kind of like what we've talked in the past, you know, it's not just Chanel, it's also Louis Vuitton because their vintage pieces are amazing. So I can only imagine vintage pieces from Chanel. I know a lot of people talk about the quality of the lambskin. They say that it's a lot, it's a lot softer. It feels a lot, um, it feels a lot more luxurious than some of the items that they have now. Sometimes uh, the older pieces had that really nice matte type of finish to the lambskin. Nowadays, it's a lot more it's a lot shinier but if there's one thing that I have always always appreciated when it comes to vintage Chanel is the gold-plated hardware I mean oh my gosh it was so incredibly beautiful some people might argue that they end up chipping a lot faster you know when it comes to the gold plating but man was it good looking I just felt that especially with the with the with the gold plated hardware and then the black either caviar or the black lambskin it just looked amazing absolutely amazing and i really wish that they would introduce it back into their pieces because i thought it was just incredibly incredibly gorgeous but uh, unfortunately that's not the case they decided to go for different materials or add different textures to it with some of the uh, some of the stories that you hear they're they're just not holding up as well as they used to in the past you know which is definitely a major major bummer but i am happy to say that none of the pieces that i have within my collection when it comes to their leather goods have i had an issue with that i I've had to take it in for repair or take it into the spa or anything like that. No, you're not crazy. The background has changed. This is a first, but unfortunately when I was editing this video, the last part of this question was cut off from the microphone. But uh, what I was trying to say is that Chanel should really take note from other fashion houses that are struggling when it comes to quality control. You hear about so many different brands that are trying to keep up, you know, with the demand, but they're still increasing their prices. And I feel like Chanel, you know, the prices that that they're charging for a lot of these items that are starting to have way more you know issues is something that they really need to take note of is something that they really need to keep under control because if you want to continue to increase prices to an astronomical amount I mean you better make sure that whatever you're putting out there is top quality and it's the best that it can be you know and not just kind of uh, rest on your laurels that just because you're Chanel means that you can put something that's mediocre out there or something that's half-assed and people will buy it just because of your name 
same. You know what I mean? So I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you guys think? Are you a big fan of, uh, of new Chanel? Are you a bigger fan of vintage Chanel? Whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. But once again, this is a first and we go back to our regular background. Next question from Aisha Barrett. Do you ever feel uncomfortable having a big collection? I sometimes get overbuying anxiety when I see too many luxury bags sitting in my closet, so I start selling them and kind of renewing my selections. Um, all right, so I completely understand where you're coming from, and I don't necessarily feel uncomfortable. I might have felt a type of anxiety in the past when I would end up buying a few handbags within the same time frame. So it's almost like I wouldn't be able to fully enjoy one handbag before I was already moving Moving on to the next type of thing. The majority of my handbags I've had for years and I have a pretty good rotation and there are some that I use more than others but for the most part I feel that that same rotation kind of helps to keep the flame alive so to speak so I don't necessarily get bored of one handbag or I don't feel a type of anxiety you know to have to use them all at once because I've already had them for quite some time or what have you. Now I try to savor each and every moment give each bag it's five minutes of fame or it's 15 minutes of fame or whatever it is you know so that way I'm like okay I like it you know I was able to use it for X amount of, you know for a certain amount of time or what have you and then later on after I've done research then I decide to to move on to the other one you know and in my experience by being able to kind of step back and pump the brakes and not buy as frequently as I bought before you know in a short amount of time that really ended up helping so that way I don't experience that same type of anxiety or that same type of pressure that I had in the past you know so I'm a lot more selective I end up doing a ton of research and I just ensure that that I end up enjoying each and every handbag that I do decide, you know, that I do decide to add to my collection before I decide to jump into, uh, you know, to getting another one. But that's, like I said before, that was just my experience. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What about you guys? Do you end up feeling any type of pressure, any type of anxiety with the amount of handbags that you have? If so, or if not, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Pam Snyder. I always see your Chanel GST upright. Is this how you always store it? I was told to lay it on its side to avoid the sag. Um, all right, so I did bring it out so we have a little bit of eye candy. And yes, I have always stored the Chanel GST in the upright position, fully stuffed. And now I also have a Samorga organizer in here. You guys might not be able to see it that I leave in here at all times. And I think that by doing those three things, it's really helped to ensure that it keeps its shape as time has gone by. I've had this bag for five, five and a half years, something like that. And I think that it has aged beautifully. I do have a little bit of a sag, not too, too bad, you know, because unfortunately, just like Pam had mentioned, this bag is very prone to getting that sag. You end up seeing quite a bit of wrinkling and a lot of ripples on this right here. So even if you have it, you know, this way, you're able to see that sag and it's very, very noticeable, you know, but I think, um, I personally think that I've had pretty good success in, you know, the fact that it doesn't have too bad of a sag because of how I ended up storing it. Now, I also know that there are quite a few people that also prefer to store it that way, you know, on its side. And I think that's great. But personally, the reason why I opted not to store it that way is because I felt that the quilts on the back might end up flattening a lot faster than it would take for it to develop a sag. You know, so I think that whenever it comes to storing your handbags, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. You know, some sales associates will suggest to leave the handbag inside of the boxes. Um, I disagree with that. I think that the leather needs to breathe, but either way, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. If it makes you feel comfortable laying it down, then by all means do that. Um, but that's what I experienced and I feel that it's really been able to, you know, to help the shape of it as time has gone by. And I mean, when I first got this bag, I used it to death. I don't use it as much anymore. I still love it. It's still a forever bag. But even with all of that use, I think it really comes down to how you end up storing a handbag as far as how it'll look, you know, in five years time or 10 years time or what have you. So that's what I would suggest, you know, if that's, uh, if you're open to it, to be able to keep it upright, fully stuffed, and maybe put an organizer in there or leave the organizer if you decide to go for, um, for that type of thing in this bag. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention when it comes to the GST and storage, uh, this bag came with this type of dust bag. It's not the best and it's very, very small. Now you might think that you might be able to fit the bag 
in here no problem uh, but it makes it very difficult to be able to put the dust bag on top of it so what I end up doing I put the dust bag on its side that way I'm able to have enough space on the top I'm not necessarily kind of smashing down the material and that also I think has been able to keep it you know from not necessarily losing its shape too too much I've also done the whole dust bag on the side with the speedies because the dust bags that those come with not the newer ones because I feel like they're They've been a lot more generous with the uh, with the dust bags. Before they were very small, they were drawstring. Uh, so I always ended up putting the dust bags on their side. I really thought about doing a video strictly on storage. I might end up doing that later, but um, yes, that is how I end up storing it. Sorry, I went on that tangent. Uh, but um, like I said before, I think uh, I think it has it has held up quite quite nicely. Just a little bit, just a little bit of sag, not too bad. So fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from April Spritz. Hopefully I said that correctly. Do you carry perfume in your handbag? And if so, how? Are you ever afraid of the bottle leaking on the inside of your handbag? All right, so fantastic question. And do I carry perfume in my handbag? Sometimes. More often than not, I don't like to carry one. And am I afraid of the bottle leaking on the inside of my handbag? Absolutely. That is like my biggest fear. And I feel like I'm always so nervous. I'm always so paranoid. You know, when I do end up carrying uh, the fragrances and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna leak. It's gonna get all over. You know, you know, I kind of I kind of view fragrances inside of handbags kind of like loose keys because they can be deadly you know it can end up ruining the lining it can ruin other small other goods I feel I feel like I make this giant production in my head of what's going to happen and I can't really this is this is so ridiculous but I feel like I can't really enjoy myself when I have any type of fragrances on me because I'm always like oh, it's gonna happen it's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> Some of you might think it sounds so, so silly, but I got to be honest with you, all right? It's one of those things that I have. It's one of those quirks, and I get super, super paranoid. So for the most part, I don't like to carry any fragrances with me. Now, when I do carry them, it's usually in containers like this. Um, I really like the twist uh, type of uh, container, like the Chanel one. This is the travel spray. You just end up putting the vial in here, and this ends up hiding very nicely, so I don't necessarily have to worry too much about leakage, although, I mean, you can still get some type of liquid that comes out of the top. You know, so I do like these. I also have some scent bird containers that are very similar to this. And I do like just getting the vials and then being able to put them in there. These are also really great for travel instead of having to carry a big old bottle. Um, other times I end up going for something like this. Now this is actually the one that I prefer because it does have the twist, uh, or not the twist, the pop off top. And then you have the vial in here. And because it's kind of, to me, it seems like it's a little bit more secure. You know what I mean? I can't even close it. <laughs> like it's, I don't have to worry. I'm not going to have as much leakage as I think I would with something like this. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I don't like to carry bottles with me for that same reason. I have to have a little bit more security just for that peace of mind. There have been times that I have also put these inside of Ziploc bags because, <laughs> because I didn't want to have any type of leakage. Like I'm telling you, I get, <laughs> I get so paranoid. It's like, calm down calm down. If I'm going to make that big of a deal about it, just don't carry it type of thing, you know, but I've told you before, I'm a pack rat. Sometimes I just want to carry a little bit more and I want to carry a little bit more. And, um, I don't know. <laughs> I feel, I feel like the more I talk about this, the more ridiculous I sound, but you know what? It is what it is. But anywho, as far as bottles go inside of my handbags, no, I don't like to carry them for fear of them leaking, but if I do carry them, it's in something like this, something with the twist off or with the pop top, um, right, pop top, uh, or putting these inside of Ziploc bags. I mean, I'm sure you can also put the bottles inside of Ziploc bags, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough about that but uh, fantastic question hopefully I was able to answer it and I would love to know how do you guys carry your perfumes for those of you that do carry your fragrances with you you know let us know in the comment section down below but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it next question from Debla do you have a recommendation for a durable high-end handbag or a tote that you would feel comfortable shoving in a gym locker I often go to the gym and then work so I want the bag to look professional at work 
I'm currently using my large Longchamp, but it's starting to look really worn, almost unpresentable. Um, all right, so fantastic question. Um, it is hard to say when it comes to totes because usually the silhouette is a lot larger than most lockers. Of course, it depends on the size of the locker. Some of them are a little bit boxier, some of them are a little bit longer, and some of them are very generous in size that you don't have to necessarily worry about, um, you know, about the corners of the handbag rubbing or the handbag losing its shape in general. You know, so going for a material that is uh, a lot more flexible is what I would end up recommending. But for example, let's say that it is a little bit of a smaller space and if you decide to go for the Neverfull, I absolutely love that bag. But if it's something that you continuously do by putting it in that confined space, it might end up causing the canvas to crack as time goes by. So that's just one thing to keep in the back of your mind. Um, there have been times that I have been able to get away with using a Speedy inside of a locker, no problem. I didn't have issues, again, with the corners rubbing. I didn't have issues with it losing its shape or anything anything like that. So that's one, uh, you know, that's one suggestion. Um, now I know that you said that the long shop that you're using is looking pretty worn and in all honesty that's the one that I would feel the most comfortable putting in a locker. I absolutely love Longchamp and I would end up going for another one because these guys, especially the Le Pliage line, I feel like they're workhorses. You know, they have awesome, awesome craftsmanship and they have a fabulous price point. So by continuing to go for another Longchamp, that way you can ensure that the rest of your handbags stay looking as fabulous as possible for as long as possible. You know what I mean? So that would be my suggestion suggestion or again it depends on the size of the uh of the locker. If you have a little bit more space by going for something boxier such as the Speedy, whether it's a classic or a bandolier, that might be a great way to go. So unfortunately, I don't have a specific type of handbag that you can go for besides going for another Longchamp, whether it is the Le Pliage line or going for their all leather line. I think both of them are fantastic, you know, but ultimately I would end up going for a handbag that has a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the material, something that won't lose its shape, something that won't end up having the corners rub on the inside of the locker you know but as I said previously it really depends on the size and you know the type of handbag that you can get away with but either way I would go for something that won't end up causing it to wear a lot faster as time goes by but I turn to you guys for help if any of you have suggestions for gym friendly handbags or totes let us know in the comment section down below so fantastic question I don't know if this ends up helping you out but hopefully we get some awesome recommendations and the last question from Cynthia Flores are you still thinking of adding a Goyard handbag to your collection why or why not? Um, all right, so yes, I have thought about adding a handbag from this fashion house quite a bit. I've actually had it on my wish list many of times and I still can't seem to pull the trigger. I am very much on the fence and I've done a ton of research too. You know, I've seen the pros, I've seen the cons and I'm still unsure. So I think that because I'm so unsure, I might end up going for a small other good first. And that's actually what I prefer to do whenever it comes to introducing a new fashion house into my collection. Sometimes I have done it in the past, other times I haven't, but for for the most part, I do prefer to go for small leather goods first because I feel like with those pieces, you can really you can really get a feel for the brand, you can really get a feel for the quality, and you interact with those items so much more than you do a handbag, so that way you can really see how the wear and tear is before you decide to go into, you know, before you decide to go into a handbag and see how it ends up working out for your lifestyle. Um, but I think that they have so many incredibly beautiful pieces, whether it's their handbags or their small leather goods or their travel pieces, they're just gorgeous. And as I said previously, I have seen so many people that talk about their craftsmanship and they feel like a lot of the items that they have they haven't had any issues but then I've also read where people have had pieces for like three months up to six months and they're already experiencing some type of cracking you know so that really <laughs> that kind of makes me nervous but uh, I definitely feel that I'll end up going for a small leather good first a card holder or what have you just so I can get a feel for it and then hopefully if everything work works out okay then I can end up going for uh, for a handbag. But I would love to hear your thoughts on Goyard. What do you guys think? If you do have it, do you recommend it? For those of you that have had it, and maybe if you sold it for whatever reason, let us know in the comment section down below. The more information out there, the better. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. I wanna share something with you that I thought was incredibly sweet and gave me such awesome ideas for the future. So in last week's video in the comment section, Ella Stevens was asking for recommendations for her boyfriend's milestone birthday. She was thinking about getting him a Mongrafite keep all, which by the way, I think is an awesome gift. And another little suggestion, what if you got your initials and his initials hot stamped on the luggage tag? That would be really sweet. But she also got a suggestion from Yi Jojo. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly and this is what I wanted to share. 
I just wanted you to know what I did for my hubby's 40th. I made 40 small presents for him, hid them in the house, gave him a treasure map to use and look for the presents. I'm a full-time stay-at-home mother, and I don't have an income, hence the small presents, which did not cost much, but all things very useful and things that he needs. I also got 40 friends and family who live abroad to make a birthday wish video clip. A photo book, which consists of photos of him from when he was one years old till 40, with the help from my mother-in-law. When he received it, he was so touched and cried. He said that the gifts were the most thoughtful and special gift he had ever received. Just a little harmless information. I am sure that whatever you decide to get him, he will love it very much. How incredibly sweet is that? Oh my goodness. Just everything that went into making the treasure map and hiding the gifts and just the thought of all of these gifts, I think is absolutely amazing. So, so sweet. And you best believe that I'm gonna be using this on my friends and family whenever they have milestone birthdays. So thank you for the suggestion, Yi Jojo. I think that was awesome. So again, that's why I wanted to share. But if any of you guys do have suggestions for Ella Stevens for her boyfriend's milestone birthday, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, all right, so I'm also gonna do something a little bit different. Every week you guys get to ask me questions. I thought maybe I could ask you a question. My question is, if you can change one thing in the handbag community, what would that be and why? If you want to, let us know in the comment section down below. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. You will see me later. I know that last week was kind of, um, I wasn't really there because I had a lot going on, but you will see me one other time. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.